next presentation, <coughs> which is uh, being given by the Health in Our Hands team. Health in Our Hands um, is um, a long-standing funding, uh, has long-standing funding from the National Institutes of Health uh, to provide curriculum that influences public health in kids as well as teaches them all about uh, science, uh, both in high school and in middle school. It started as a project um, at the University of Michigan. It's, came up, it's come up here and has expanded um, into um, several middle school curriculum. Um, it's led by Rini Bayer and our team of, of Health in Our Hands collaborators up here who are going to be giving us a presentation on the curriculum overview as well as some of the research that's come out of the project over the last couple of years. So without further ado, I give you the Health in Our Hands. Thank team. you. Thank you. <laughs> this is right. That's what you wanted. I don't know how to put this on. Yeah, I'll just put this on. Okay, I'll okay. put this over here. Okay. Okay. Okay, so thank you for coming. I think um, Bob actually did a really good job of introducing our first slide. Um, my name is Consuelo Morales. Um, I'm a, a research associate here at CREATE. This is um, my second year now, and uh, I just started working last year, um, last summer, on the SIBA project. And so I'm very excited to be doing this. I actually worked on the high school version of this in, um, at U of M. And so getting the chance to come back and work on this has been very exciting. Um, and as Bob said, we've got Edith Adler here. Did you want to say I'd love to say hi, everybody, and thank you all for coming. And this is very exciting, it's exciting because we're at the end of the grant, and it's kind of a nice summary for um, our work here. So. Amy, did you want to say anything? And I'm Amy Bayer, and um, I also worked with Consuelo on the first iteration of this grant, where we found out that um, students did well in high school, but they could really use more prior knowledge, and so we argued with um, National Institutes of Health to see that we would be able to give them more prior knowledge so they'd be more successful in the high school unit, and so that's how we got this grant and how I came here to create this stuff. Uh, so while we are asking you to um, come on our journey about the data, um, it's actually not the beginning of our journey. It's, um, as Bob said, the end of a five-year project. Um, we are hopeful um, that we will be getting a new SEPA grant. Um, we should be learning, we hope, in the next week or so, keeping our fingers crossed. Um, so yes, so we're going to begin our journey about all of the things that we have um, discovered in this project. So it's a NIH-funded uh, it's NIH funded through the um, Science Education Partnership Award. Um, the goals um, were to develop a middle school curriculum, which was actually two middle school curriculums, diabetes and addiction. Um, one of the really great things about this is the engagement of students and family and community through the partnerships that we have worked to create. Um, and also to reduce um, this achievement gap that we see, and I will talk about um, in a moment, and to obviously disseminate the materials that we create. Um, so we have several partners, academic, um, we work with um, also partners in Flint and in Detroit. And Joe, sorry, and Joe is the PI on this project, um, which is yeah. Um, so why this new approach? Um, so we know that um, an understanding of the concepts, modern concepts of um, gene environment interactions and natural selection, it's really critical um, for students' ability to address health issues, um, health concerns that are relevant to their lives and to their community, um, and to improve the health of their community, sorry. And it falls, or it goes in line really well with the framework and science education bringing together um, the three-dimensional learning. Um, so trying to um, kind of marry these two ideas of gene environment interaction and the importance of empowering students um, to be able to make uh, health um, decisions, right, um, but within this idea of three-dimensional learning. Um, we also know from research that um, students have 
um, a poor understanding of core ideas in science. And this is one of the ways that we feel that we can support them um, to um, build better ideas uh, about core ideas in science. Um, we also know that there's a decline in students' interest in science. So how do we um, help avoid that? Um, we think that part of that is our new approach, these, this curriculum. And also that students really find science irrelevant to their lives. And that's another um, important thing that we're trying to address through our curriculum. And so, um, you know, people talk about these persistent achievement gaps. Um, while all of them are um, rightward, you know, so the um, achievement is increasing, but we still have these gaps. And there's many reasons, historical, political, um, social. And so the, the really important thing is that these um, achievement gaps persist, but they are modifiable. And that's what we're really trying to say, that it's not because the students cannot do this work. Um, it's that we need to figure out ways that um, we can help close this achievement gap. But I guess really that these are modifiable factors. And th that's what we're trying to find. How do we, what are those factors that we can modify to close that achievement gap? Um, so again, the Health in Our Hands project, um, we really find it's a new approach to learning because it's community inspired. So they're community inspired um, project based learning approach to um, science teaching and learning. And again, they're, they're two middle school projects, um, diabetes and addiction, um, that get at this, the core idea of gene environment interactions, specifically diabetes um, and addiction, and how those can impact students, families, and communities, and what students can do um, to empower them to make changes for the better. And so, Wait, this is yeah. right. So, so these are the three um, areas, the, the three areas that we're going to be talking about: the curriculum development and pedagogical support, um, community engagement, and the school administration. And so, I will um, hand it over to yep. Eddie. So, I don't see this for the. I don't know if you want to uh, well, I'm walking around. I'll, okay. I'll take. Okay. So as Consuelo said, our approach actually has three components to it. And there's something innovative in each of those three components. And, I th and we think, and also in the combination of the three. So while um, the first one, which is the curriculum development and the pedagogical support that we provide to the teachers, that is the what, like what are we doing? What are we talking about? And what are we doing? And then the two other one, which is the collaboration and the um, working together with both the community and the school administrations, they also have an, in an innovative part in it. And this is like, how do we take this a step further into the schools? So the first thing I am going to talk about is actually the curriculum development and explain why or what are the innovative aspects of this curriculum. So everything today is divided into three. <laughs> so we have three components. And within the curriculum, we have three things that we focus on. The first one is, and I'll talk about each one of those separately. So the first one is that our curriculum is NGSS aligned. I'll talk about it in a second. The second one is that it follows the principles of project-based learning. And the third one is that we have a very big focus, especially during the last year that Consuelo came on, on teachers' PD and extensive support, especially as we're looking of scaling up our efforts and disseminating it um, a bit wider. So I'll start with the, oops, sorry. I'll start with the NGSS. So the main standard that we're focusing in both units is this one for middle school, middle school whatever, and then it's construct a scientific explanation based on evidence for how environmental and genetic factors influence the growth of organisms. So that's our main standard for both of the units, but as you know, it is not the only standard. So I'm not expecting you to read this, <laughs> but I just wanted to show you the bundles of standards that we've incorporated in both of the units. Now, some of these, if you can see, we p some of them are unique to, the seven to this unit here. Some of them are both in both units. And the reason for that is it's because we're taking instruction a little bit deeper each time. So while we touch on the same standards in both units, the second unit, which is actually the addiction unit, takes those standards and takes instruction a little bit deeper into the, um, both, well, mostly in the science and the core ideas. So this is our alignment. And if, if you want to have this look, look at this, 
later, then I can always talk about this um, in, in the questions and answers. So that's the NGSS alignment. The way we align our curriculum with NGSS is by using the principles of project-based learning. Now, by looking at everybody in the audience, I, can, I know that you guys are familiar, but um, we will show you the uh, curriculum according to the principles, okay? So as you know, I guess, project-based learning is a comprehensive approach to classroom teaching and learning and is designed to engage students in investigation of authentic problems. The reasons we're using PBL is because it's grounded in literature and engages learners, learners over time. It uses theories of learning in its approaches and it can be used for aligning, alignment of curriculum to NGSS. So I will go through the principles of project-based learning and show you how these principles are expressed in our curriculum so you'll figure out what we're actually doing. So the first two principles of project-based learning is that students pursue solution to meaningful questions, questions sorry, and that they expose their question by participating in authentic situated inquiry to figure out why a phenomena occurs. So this is our, this is our first unit which is diabetes. Um, it's focused, so our core phenomena is diabetes. The students meet Monique, who's a teenager, their age, and she's suffering from type 2 diabetes. So that raises lots of questions. What's type 2 diabetes? First of all, what is diabetes? Is there type 1 and type 2? What does it mean to be the only one? She says she's the only one in her family. What does it mean to be the only one? Why is she the only one in her family? What affects her diabetes? So all these questions are questions that students, with the guidance of the teacher, raise while they're um, looking at her video. And as you can see, the, um, the curriculum is structured a, um, around these sub-driving questions. So we have, why does Monique have diabetes? But then we have, how can we describe Monique's diabetes, which engages students in the um, understanding of the mechanism of diabetes, of glucose and pancreas and the insulin and all that. How does Monique's family affect her diabetes, which is the genetic component? How does her, her environment and what she eats and whether she engages in sports, how does that affect her diabetes? So that's the environmental component. And then how do these two components, right, gene-environment interaction, so how do they play together in <coughs> um, and, and cause her to have type 2 diabetes? And then we have individual action, right, what can I do to reduce the risk of diabetes? What can we do for my community, what can I do for, or what can we do? for our community to reduce diabetes, and then something about population over time. So what happens to our population over time? So you can see, if you go back to the principles, we have meaningful question that is divided into sub-driving questions, and through each of these le learning sets, students figure out what's going on, what is happening. The second, and, and so just forgot to say something, the reason we chose diabetes is really important, but I will leave it to Rini to talk about this later. So she'll cycle back to why we chose diabetes. The second um, unit is about addiction. Again, why we chose addiction is, is actually really important, and I will just leave it to Rini to talk about that later. But it starts out with, um, stu with um, teenagers talking about vaping, which is actually a really big thing going on in the addiction field. <laughs> And so kids start out by why do we look for thrills? Why is it important to look for thrills? And then why do we feel excited? So you kind of see that it's the same, same and different structure than the diabetes unit. We have the driving question, we have sub-driving question, which tackle the phenomena from different perspectives. And then we, have the re we talk about the reward pathway, we talk about natural selection, we talk about genes, environment, um, what happens when we change our environment, and then how can looking for thrills make me miserable? Which is the question, what can I do? What can each of us do for their own to reduce our risk of addiction? And what can we do as a community to reduce, reduce the risk of, of addiction in our community? So it follows the same pathway. So summing, summarizing it up, um, important questions, we have something like that, um, wait, meaningful questions, and we explore this by um, a situated inquiry. So, Hold on, why don't I, okay, why, it's just a little bit slower than me. Okay, so the third principle of project-based learning is that using learning technologies and other scaffolds to help students participate in the activities. So our curriculum um, has lots of technology in, in, in it. One of it is, so I'll just briefly go through the different technologies. The whole curriculum is actually disseminated to both teachers and students through something we call the roadmap, 
which is a visual representation of the unit, and it's um, developed um, within cl collaboration with U of M. So this is one thing, and we tackle each of these. If anything is interesting to you, we can go back and talk to this about this later. The second thing is that we have many simulations that we use throughout the process, of, throughout the curriculum, so that students can actually carry out experiments. This one is specifically designed and developed for our curriculum. It's about sand rats. Um, but we have also some simulation about natural selection and others that we use in the curriculum. And then we use SAGE model throughout the whole curriculum. I'll explain in a second, but that's from another project that CREATE is carrying out with Concrete Consortium. And all these play out really important big roles in students' understanding. So the fourth, I think, fourth principle is that students create artifacts that address the driving question and explain phenomena. So what I didn't tell you is that as students go through the unit and answer the sub-driving questions, they actually develop a model of either diabetes or addiction. So every time they have something new, they learn something new, they have something that they want to add to their model, at the end of each lesson set, they go back and revise their model to um, reflect their new understanding. So actually the modeling plays a, a big part in our curriculum. Um, it kind of summarizes and puts everything together. It also could be used as a um, formative assessment to teachers to know what students understand and what are uh, misconceptions. These are some of the students' models from, from the diabetes unit. Did I forget it? No, I think, I think I'm fine. Okay. So, engage in collaborative activities. So, um, another thing about our curriculum is we progress from w individual work to, um, to kids working in teams of two to then bigger groups. And you'll see at the end, we really big, we actually have a district-wide collaboration, which I'll talk in a second. So we use a lot of collaborative activities throughout the curriculum, and they progress. We kind of have it in a progressive way throughout the curriculum. OK, so till now, I actually kind of told you things that you've already known, right? We've talked about the principles of project-based learning and how they play out in our curriculum. The big addition, I think, of our curriculum to uh, or our uniqueness, I'll just say it this way. The unique part of our curriculum is that we also engage the students in community action projects, which are kind of a culminating um, event <laughs> for the whole learning of the community. So what's a community action project? So I will show you first so you get an understanding, and then I'll um, talk about this. So I will show you. Oh, oh I need to do it from there. Oh, it's small on the screen. Never mind. Students are aiming to make a positive impact on their community by helping their friends and family make healthier choices. That's because an unhealthy lifestyle greatly increases a person's chance of developing type 2 diabetes. We're talking about some brand new researchers on the horizon here. They actually cause their family and loved ones to start changing their lifestyles in order to prevent type 2 diabetes. So we are so proud of them. We all are. The event took place at Southwestern Classical Academy. Most of them say now that 
think about that is cool to think about how they um what they eat and how they eat it. See, see when it, it was 50 and 50 now it's more. It's more. So and this is just Hey, I will So it was kind of hard to hear. I'm sorry for that. But what he was saying, he was, OK, so we, he, the, the, the kids had a, a, a project in the class. They showed slide to, they went to fifth graders. They're in sixth grade. So they went to fifth grade classes. And they showed they did something to raise their awareness to why do you have diabetes and what you can, how you can get in. And he's saying how you can get rid of it. And then it was 50, he says 1%, but it's 50-50. So before they had surveys for the kids, they asked them what do they know, and then or are they interested in the consequences or something like that. And then it was 50, so it was 50-50. 50 said they were interested and 50 said they were not interested, 50%. And then they did the presentation, they explained about diabetes, the processes, what you can do about it, and then they went back to the same class and they passed surveys again. And then he's saying after we did the presentation, more kids are interested in the consequences of healthy eating. So that's what Kanye was saying. It was kind of hard to hear it. So this is one example of a kid showing or demonstrating their community projects. So the community projects are kind of a way for us to connect the society and the science, and we view it as in the middle because the kids use their scientific understanding of what they've learned in the class to create to, to create personal and connective social changes. So they don't, and it's really important to say, they don't, the, the projects are not core science. They don't go and examine a pH or examine a air quality or stream quality. It's actual social sciences. As you can see by the questions, the questions are social science based. So for example, these are questions that kids, that classes have done. How does raising students' awareness to the amount of sugar, sugar they, eat in the f they eat affect their food choices, right? So they do an intervention and they check before and after and see does that influence food choices? How does watching TV and playing video games affect children's healthy lifestyles? And then they could also monitor themselves. How do smoothies affect your health? And can healthy smoothies affect or attract consumers? How does my neighborhood affect my exercise and walking habits, right? You say kids need to exercise right, more, right? Everybody knows that. Does my neighborhood support my exercise or is this something that I can change? Um, so those are the questions. Now, how do they get to these questions? So I'm st taking a step back. They look at their models, right? They've developed models throughout the whole process. And they say, OK, diabetes has genetic component and it has also environmental components. At this moment in time, I cannot do anything about my genetics, right? That's what I had. That's what I inherited from my mom and my dad, maybe some way in the future. But I can do something about my environment. Then the question is, what can I do about my environment? And that's where they start. That's the starting point for the community projects, which then they engage. So, so two emphasizes, like we call this models in action, right? You develop a model in order to do something to improve your community. And just so you remember that these are not science core, I mean, you know, science core scientific project, but more of social science projects. Um, I, I don't want to read all of this, but I think that I want to stress that the, the nice thing about these projects is that they address students' background because they're a nice and structured framework for us to bring in to show them that science is relevant to their life. That's one thing. So I, we bring the science out. But then we can also bring their families in and engage because we, and it's actually structured in the project. They have to do something with their families. We can talk about this later, but they c there's something that they have to do with their families within the project. And it's also a way for us to bring um, other people of the community, especially careers. We want to expose them to many careers. That's what Consuelo was saying, one of the reasons we got the grant. So this is a nice and structural way for us to bring different careers into the classroom and have a specific and active role for them and not just come and support the curriculum, which sometimes does not have any real meaning about what does it mean. And so that's one thing. And the second thing, it empowers um, kids for action, right, and engage them in critically thinking about their environment and their neighborhood and the, um, what role could they take to improve their neighborhood. Um, they have to communicate the science, as, they saw, as you guys uh, have just seen, and they have to advocate, why do you think, based on your evidence, why do you suggest doing what you're suggesting? So, um, what, excuse me, Oh, sorry, yeah, and so <laughs> relevance, to students, stu um, relevance to students' life, it also enables us to use students' background as an asset. So we bring in different funds of knowledge from their parents, from their neighbors, from the neighborhood, and all these are 
in, these are the core um, aspects of the project. It's not that we can, it's not like an additive thing, it is the thing. So we really view it as something really important. Um, okay, so we've talked about the NGSS alignment of the curriculum. We've talked about the project-based learning. I just wanted to say, because it's out of the scope of, I would like to sentence, out of the scope of our current talk, but we also have extensive um, teacher PD and support for the teachers. And we've done, as, as I said, um, we've really focused on this over, this, this over the last year. Um, but if it interests you, we'll be happy to talk about this later, just because we don't want to focus on that um, right now. So, okay, so with this, I will hand it over to Rini to talk about this collaboration with the schools. We now give this to you because oh, right. he has to. Good. Yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. So um, the second component in um, in how we put together health in our hands, part of the project is the school administration partnership. We want to tell you a little bit about that. Um, the first of all, to think about why the district would want to be. It, this is the entire district, which is something that's kind of unique about this. Is that um, the entire district of Flint was involved with our project. We were in all the classrooms. Um, and why would they want to do that? One reason was because of their um, science students' scores. So for instance, here are the scores from um, MSTEP from statewide test from 15-16. And you can see in fourth grade, it's virtually almost 100% of the kids are, have, are not proficient. That line there is proficiency, so almost 100% are not proficient in science scores. It goes up a little bit um, in the seventh grade and, and 11th grade but um, it's hard to know if it's significant or not. We know they've had a little more opportunity in the middle school to be exposed to science than they are in the elementary school where the teachers avoid that a lot. So um, perhaps in, by, by high school they, achieve a they show a little bit more achievement, but it's hard to even know if that's very how significant that is. So, the, um, that, so that's one reason why the district wanted to be involved with Health in Our Hands. And another is because after the the um, state adopted the new Michigan science standards that are basically the next generation science standards, NGSS. Um, the, the another reason was to involve their teachers in uh, teaching practices related to next generation science standards. And this would at least give them an opportunity to expose all of their sixth grade teachers to um, those teaching practices and support for them in the classroom um, and outside the classroom extensively. And then it's also important to identify not only the, your partner's agendas, but also the, the agenda that you have in common that keeps you working together. And, for, for, and we found in common with our school administration partners that we wanted to improve teaching and learning in STEM disciplines for all the students, and also to reduce disparities in education and health in, in, their, in their classrooms. And for sustainability, we wanted to work together to have this be a sustained efforts in their in the classrooms. So um, mutually reinforced activities, activities that we all took part in together, is um, the school district and the teachers collaborated in the design, in the development and design of the curriculum, particularly at, in, in different iterations, throughout different iterations. The school district recruited all the schools, talked to all the principals, and identified the teachers that we would work with and basically assigned the teachers. This is different than a lot of our projects. Um, usually, uh, often we talk to the schools and they ask teachers to volunteer and so often we're working with teachers that want to be involved. In this case, this is integrated into the curriculum of the school. This is the scope and sequence of what the teachers had to teach at this period of time. Um, and so th this was just what they did. These were the, this was the curriculum that the teachers would, had to do anyways which has some advantages <laughs> and some disadvantages, and we could write a whole, we could do a whole presentation just on that, so we'll move on for right now. Or, and we can talk about that if you want to at some point. Um, we also, uh, the teachers were released for teacher professional development, and, and they found subs for the teachers and um, for ongoing support. And also, um, they are, became involved in our sustainability efforts, which we'll talk about later, a collaboration which um, grew out of the community called the um, Greater, oh, it's actually it's called Health in Our Hands Genes Flint Genesee Partnership, um, which we'll talk about later too. Okay, so um, the third component then is the community engagement. 
And as E.T. Uh, referenced several times, the community, we would come back to and talk about how the community was engaged throughout this process and what importance that had. So um, we actually took a, an approach from public health, given that my background's in public health and community-based participatory research is actually what I've, I've spent a lot of time on working on. We used a community-based participatory research approach to engaging our community partners and our school partners in this collaboration in, in developing the curriculum and, and, and acting it. And a CBPR approach is, an, equi is a, an approach where you equitably involve all of your partners in the research process. And um, you, the purpose of it, the aim of CBPR is to improve the health and quality of life of community residents and to increase their knowledge and understanding of a given phenomena. And also to let others, to, to take the learnings from the local community and also spread those learnings that can be useful across nationally in terms of uh, policy and social change nationally as well, as well as locally, so it has both components. And we could also do an entire talk just about how we use CBPR in this, pro in this whole process and what, our, what we're finding and how we're moving that forward. And we're not going to have time to, that's not within the scope, within scope. The scope. Of beyond, the scope. <laughs> beyond the scope of this presentation. Thank you very much. <laughs> but, um, but we would be happy to answer questions or come back to that at another time. Oh, 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 yeah, that was the other thing, right. We also, um, oh, no, that's right here. So uh, we also wanted to point out that CBPR has a set of principles that you use to guide your work. We use these principles in guiding our work. Similar, I mean, it's similar to like project-based learning in terms of principles that guide what you do and how you apply them. So we just wanted to point out that another good reason to, to that another thing that was useful in CBPR was that the set of principles and, and, and merging those principles with PBL, thinking about those two together, also helped guide and um, support the work that we did in developing the Health in Our Hands curriculum and working with our community and the schools. So when we talk about the community being involved in um, Health in Our Hands, a question often comes up, well, what do you mean by community? And what we mean is, in, in an ecological approach, we mean starting with the families and the students and the residents of Flint and it, as central to who the community is. There are um, also supporting community-based organizations and faith-based organizations as well as um, agencies um, and programs in the community um, that support and, and relate more closely to the families. And then larger regional, city and regional organizations, um, uh, hospital systems and the health department that also relate to and support families um, increasingly. Um, and so you can see some of our partners related to those different layers of the community that we, uh, that we worked with um, in, our, in our approach. And again, thinking about the agenda of the partners and then our common agenda. So why would all these different partners work with us? What did we, what was, well, how did it benefit them? And each of those agencies and groups that we, that we work with in somewhere in their missions and in their activities, it's part of their mission to improve the health of, of residents in the community. Could be youth, it could be family members, but somewhere, or you know, like hospital systems and the health department, their interest is in the improvement of health. Um, they want to do, uh, many of them want to involve the community in, in their work and what they do, and they saw this as an opportunity to connect with children, to connect with schools and teachers and um, families by being involved with us. And also to bridge, and um, bridging academia, oh, also a lot of them want to, um, in, in, if they were university partners, again, they wanted to bridge that gap between what they do in their research and how it gets carried out um, in, in classrooms and in the community. And so by being involved with us, they could, they could use some of their, what they were learning and the research that they wanted to do, working with students, working with families. In common, um, when we talk with them, they all want to make science relevant to students. They, wanna, they want them to be, uh, have more science skills and be able to relate that. They want to do it in a culturally competent way. Uh, the balance and need for standards in science curriculum with being responsive to community needs and also to be able to sustain these efforts too. They're interested in long term, not in short projects. <coughs> so how, did the com how were community members, community partners involved in what we did in Health in Our Hands? Well, starting out at the very beginning, they were involved in helping choose what were going to be the phenomena that we were going to 
work on in the um, unit. So starting with diabetes, we presented the idea of diabetes, and we presented the idea of, of reinforcing um, concepts about healthy eating and active living. And uh, they were all up. They were all on that. They're, yeah, that's great. They love Monique. They thought that was great. And so we after we talked to our community and school partners about it, then we proceeded to start to develop the unit. And so that was that they were involved in the first unit. And then it came to developing the second unit on a on, and on, and we had to choose a phenomena for the follow up unit that we knew was going to be in the seventh grade and be more scientific. And we had this whole laundry list that people had suggested, that our content experts and our scientists had suggested. And so we talked to the National Human Genome Research Institute, and they said, oh, you know, be they said, we really love all the things on your list. Uh, but you know, we really would love it. It would be great if you did the microbiome and talk to kids about, you know, what's in, in, about the science that's coming out about what's in their gut and what's on their body and how they can, you know, why that's important in their lives. And we said, yeah, that's cool, little creatures and everything. We had a great, what was your, you had a great driving question? I don't know. So then we came back to the community and we presented the laundry list and we talked about the microbiome and that's what we wanted to do. And I still think it would have been really cool. <laughs> and, um, and our community <coughs> partner said, who? I mean, how are you going to interest kids in that? We're not interested in that. And they looked at the list and they said, addiction. We really like this one on addiction. We think that one would be, we think you should choose addiction, the science of addiction. So that next day, Edith just switched the whole thing and took out the microbiome and put in addiction. And we moved forward and our community partners were really happy. So it, you can see that, I mean, it really come, it's really important to pick the right um, phenomenon, not only for the students and for the curriculum, but also something that you know will be um, important and of concern to the community so that they, that relevance is what also brings them into wanting to be part of, of your efforts as well. Is there anything more in the story you wanted me to tell? <laughs> okay, so that was the first part. That's how they collaborated in, in just in the very beginning of the curriculum development, but we would come back periodically um, and they would be involved in our activities and give us feedback and based on their feedback we would make changes as well. They also have, the, the community projects have proved to be something that everybody can get around. Um, there's guidance in there to involve academic um, researchers or uh, people in after school programs or people from um, like pharma, pharmaceutical, pharmacists and health systems or the health department being involved or, or, or nutritionists in the community being involved in the projects providing expert uh, background for the students in the classroom. And then also they would uh, come to the final event, the health summits, where the students would, those same people and many others, would come, community members came too, um, and they were involved in um, hosting and participating in the final event in the health summit. And then many of those partners, again, have been involved in our sustainability efforts. In fact, after our final health summit, um, Edith showed the first one, she didn't show the second one, but after the second health summit, um, a group emerged, a community partnership has emerged called the um, Health in Our Hands Flint Genesee Partnership. Did you search for a slide? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so this group has come together, they meet monthly, and they're trying to figure out how they can continue to support the, the uh, curriculum efforts and also sustain it over time. And they've yeah. developed a vision statement, Youth Empowered by Science to Improve Health, Advance Careers, and Promote Community Well-Being. Um, they were involved in our last health summit, the third health summit that happened in January, um, in two health summits actually, the last two health summits in, in January. And uh, the main thing we wanted to see was whether they could really recruit judges, really recruit um, uh, many, many workshop leaders, and they were uh, in, in, be in the classrooms too. So we were just trying out those relationships. Okay, so we've gone over these three parts, the um, curriculum development and the pedagogical, pedagogical support, the school administration and how they're involved, and the community engagement and how, how they're involved. The school administration, we do have representation from school administration on the community engagement component here too. So, so. So it's a lot, a lot of really interesting information, but the question still always comes down to, ooh, yeah, um, <laughs> sorry, I was looking, um, so what are students' learning outcomes, right? So it's really great, we have these really wonderful partnerships with the teachers, um, with the community, um, the students are super excited, but at the end of the day, we asked 
a really important question. How does that actually um, get, what does that do to their outcomes? As I talked before, we have this achievement gap. How do we close that gap? It's not because the students can't learn, it's because there's all kinds of other things going on. But what are ways that we can engage them in something that they feel they have agency? Um, so something about their health. Um, and how does that affect or how can they use that to improve their community? Um, but again, it comes back to um, outcomes. So we've collected a lot of data. <coughs> um, we've used design-based research approach. Um, so it's go, you know, through the various iterations. So basically, um, the diabetes began in um, July 2015, and it's gone through various iterations. Um, and each time, the unit has become um, has gone through revisions. And this is another place that isn't necessarily um, not for this, it's beyond the scope of this, but the teachers were really involved in putting their input, what's working, what's not working. So each time the unit was improved and new um, things were added or things were tweaked. Um, and the same with the addiction. The addiction was piloted in 2016 um, and both the diabetes and addiction unit were, um, again, went through another iteration this year. And we had a total of 20 teachers participate. Some were returning teachers, but 20 total teachers um, enacted both the um, diabetes, or total diabetes and addiction. And um, about 1,500 students participated um, within both units, the diabetes and the um, addiction. What was really interesting for me coming in is that some of the students who had done the diabetes were actually um, returning and doing the addiction unit with a new teacher. Um, so they had seen kind of the ideas behind um, what we had done with addiction and we're seeing, I mean with diabetes and we're seeing again, we're being um, participating in a unit now on addiction. <coughs> Um, so again, we've collected a lot of data. We're not going to talk about it now, but we want you to see that we have many data sources. Um, we have um, interviews from students. We've collected artifacts such as their models, which are really wonderful to see, which is also um, something that could be a whole other paper. Um, we've seen their um, pre and post surveys on um, their attitude toward science. That these are all things that we're still in the process of analyzing. Um, as far as what we have from um, teachers, we also have the PD sessions, we've got interviews, um, online correspondence with the community, we have their participation as judges, um, we have their reflections, and then we have questionnaires. So a lot of data that we're mulling through or beginning to. Um, so it's a lot of qualitative data. Um, you know, thinking about what are students' learning outcomes. Um, and so right now, this is the process that we're going through. We're you know, generating the, um, the code, searching for themes, reviewing those themes, um, and again, going and defining those. And you know, at the end, we will produce a wonderful report. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's what we're working on right now. Um, and with that, take it. Yes. <laughs> okay, so this is my last part before you start doing and not just listening. Um, so I just wanted to follow up with Consuelo saying, so uh, this question here, I, we, we chose it, we're, we're starting to work on it first because it's the most fundamental question. We have also questions about students learning, their modeling, the integration of technology, which has been a huge thing because of both infrastructure, we have lots of, or had actually, many issues with infrastructure at schools, um, teachers' experience with technology integration, the practices, the, well, not just the practices, the 3D learning is a big issue, and how do you get all that? So we have lots of data. This is just a question for today and what we wanted you to, um, this is what we've started to work on and what we wanted to share with you today. So what I wanted to do now, I really hope that this would work because it's hard to hear the kids anyways, and I really hope it would work. Um, we want to sh share with you uh, three minutes, I think, or two and a half minutes from seventh grade, seventh graders' final presentation. So this, these kids studied the addiction unit in their school. They did the whole uh, process, and then they went on to a, co a community action project, which was how does social media affect our feelings? That was their project. Um, it's, the it's a seventh, seventh grader 
teacher, and this is the first time he did the project with the kids. So the whole class did the same, all of his classes did the same project, and they're reporting back in the um, summit. So as they're put, um, reporting back, judges, just like me or anybody else could be a judge, are going around and interviewing their students about their work, and um, they're giving them awards um, based on what they're saying, so which is a kind of a celebration of their learning. So the kids are there, just like in a conference, just like you would see in a conference, where, like what you work and explain. So these kids are explaining to me what they've been studying. What I want you to do is try to listen to them and think that you are um, trying to figure out what are the learning outcomes. And when we talk about learning outcomes, I don't want to tell you too much because I want to hear your ideas, but anything that you think the students gained out of this experience, okay? Um, and we, I sure. think we also just want to sure. say that this is um, from January, like last month. So this is just a short tape from there. We don't have it transcribed. We don't have the um, subtitles, subtitles yet. There. So it's kind of hard to hear. So we can just you know share what you did here and. Did yeah, and I did cut their faces off, yeah. so you won't see their faces. The video has their faces actually. I just cut their faces so they can't be identified. I'm so sorry, but so it's kind of hard. I let's see if we can. Um, so as you listen to this, uh, what we'll have you do. Right, so think about their gains both a science and a community or anything else that is interesting to you, and then we'll have you talk to your partner and you know, we'll have a kind of a discussion about that. So hopefully it will work. Oh, I need to go from there. Where's my, sorry. Wait a minute, okay, so it again. Oh, Avi, do you want to see why I'm not seeing my curse, my, what, my mouse on the screen? Oh, there it is. No. I will just do it this way. Okay. Sorry about that. Just do it this way. I don't know why it doesn't. It doesn't let me do it this way. Oh. Is there any way that I could, because I think it's something with the sound. No, you can't hear it this way. Um. No, this is a problem because we're doing it through the internet, I guess. Yeah, Bob, do you know? Uh, I, um, I would just, if you have the video on your regular computer, I would do that instead of doing it through Yeah, and just put it here, okay. Oh, on the regular computer? Right. No, no, the. No, it, it doesn't have anything to do with the speaker. It has to do with your lane ears. I would do it no, outside of PowerPoint. Um, no, no, the PowerPoint is working. It's, it, no, um, I, it's because of, I won't move. Um, no, it's, it's on the, po it's the problem is with the H, with the thing. It's not my computer. No, no, I have the PowerPoint, no. Oh, I have it not cut. <laughs> I have it with the student's faces. <coughs> Um, I, I think it's not because it worked. Bef it worked. Okay, hold on. I'm. I'm really sorry. I will do this very quickly. Okay. Mm. <laughs> so I'm good. Okay. It, it's on my desk. It's. It's the same. Oh. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, we just do questions so for now. Yeah, just do questions. Anybody have any questions? So I'm, going, I'm doing a real rewind here to, to earlier in the talk. The, the students are engaged in these community action projects, right, that 
that seemed to um, the focus of them wasn't on scientific research so much as it was on uh, on the students researching a community intervention or um, attempting a social engineering task, right, in, in some cases. Um, what kinds of, of scaffolds and supports in a curriculum did you have to help students with that social science and engineering task, as opposed to, because that's, that's not part of the NPSS, So, so what kinds of things did you do to support students in engaging in, in that work? So I answer and then we'll try it again. Um, so if you want me to answer. Okay, so actually um, in my PhD students we carried out um, environmental projects which were exactly the same thing. And so I've worked, my work was, um, I've done it for four years with students. So we have actually it's more of this, I think if I'm reading the question correctly, it's more of scaffolds for the teachers because how do they guide the students through something which is which is different um, and it's also cool because in the sixth grade actually our teachers because our sixth grade teachers are in elementary schools they're not necessarily science teachers they're actually social science social studies teachers or English teachers so actually they feel very comfortable with once we have the scaffold in place and I can show you in the how we scaffold that once we have that in place they actually feel very comfortable in doing those community projects as opposed to our seventh or eighth grade teachers who are science teachers, and they actually had lots of, it was harder for them to do. Um, it, 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 it's just like, th like asking a question. We use the same strategy. So if you have to brainstorm a, s a question with the kids, just like you would brainstorm a question about a lake or the air or something to do with biology or physics, you would brainstorm about something in your community. You, you would do the same strategy. You apply the same strategy, the content as I see it, it's different. Then if you have to develop research tools, like so it has to be coherent, it has to touch the same the, um, things you want to answer, has to tackle the situation from different points of view. So how do you, that, do, you do that? That's the same whether you do it in, bio, in, in a biological context. And there are differences, but that we have that structured out. So the teachers, ha we have a whole PD with teachers about what their interest and how, what they want to do and how to think about it. And then they go to the class. Ideally, it would be totally open and the kids would bring out all the ideas, but it's not necessarily, so that you could have it more guided for the teachers or more st scaffolded for the students because it's hard for teachers to carry it out. If that answers the question, I'm and not sure. Also all the practices too, because I mean, the it was interesting that they use planning and carrying out investigations, analyzing their data, graphing their data, communicating, interpreting it, developing, uh, developing an explanation about that question. It may not have been a science question, I mean, it's strictly a science question, but it um, still involved the practices um, and cause and effect that kind of, you know, talk about mm -hmm. concepts too. Right, but so, so using that model then, right, what did you give them by way of BCIs for social science um, and, and, and social engineering aspects, right? <coughs> because the, you know, some of them were using different kinds of survey methodologies and these kinds of things, right? But you know, what, how did you incorporate that into those? Into the it's a wonderful question because you touch about the topics. And so now, as it's structured now, it's practically, you look at the model really straight for whatever you think in your community that you could might have an effect based on what you learn, which is mostly health, food and exercise, that's what you research. We don't have like the DCIs or the big ideas of science in a social context concept. So we, we, we don't. Um, like it, social media was a big I thing. Mean, I think they were looking at environmental factors, which is part of the, of the, um, the, P, of the standard, is to look at the environmental factors that affect growth and development of organisms. So they were asking questions about healthy eating or being able to exercise and those, those kinds of environmental factors and then figuring out what they could do about those factors to improve, to have an effect on their health or the health of their community. I think you could also give them, because you see, we wanted them to look for something in the communities. Many of their questions actually are in schools environment and raising awareness because those are usually the easiest way things to do also in uh, school settings um, and then if that would have a different effect than actually going and doing something like urban planning which is something that um, that one of the projects um, I don't know but that would be we don't structure the, the currently we have just look for something in the environment that could affect diabetes or addiction. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah let's just come back to the yeah, and let's see if it works because I have it on the now on the desktop. I, yeah, I, I think it's a problem with the with the but let's just see. I'm sorry, okay, I'll thank you. I'm part of the curriculum. Sorry. Oh, if you, uh, yeah, well, yeah, well, it's just, uh, yeah, <laughs> whatever you. Oh, well, my first comment is I've always been really impressed with your project. Um, and in listening to your presentation, I really like from a public health perspective how you're integrating social determinants of health and understanding, you know, how to treat type 2 diabetes. I guess from a research perspective, from a science ed perspective, and I think this goes along a little bit with Bob was saying, but I left for a few minutes, um, is how are you, like from a broad sort of point of view, how are you measuring students' understanding of the importance of social determinants of health, including type 2 diabetes? Do you have a research agenda for that? And I also, um, I want to make an additional comment. I hear your responses, and I want to encourage you to stop um, saying that this is not truly science, because it is, especially when you're integrating the community um, and students' understanding and that sort of thing, or maybe I, I got that a little bit wrong. And there are plenty of NDSS, if we're thinking about the standards, that you could use Within. Um, to sort of um, give you rationale on your project. So I, I want to sort of stray sure. away from that. Like, I want to encourage you to stray away from thinking like, this isn't truly it is. So can we focus on, you know, how are we trying to measure students' understanding um, of these social determinants of health? Right. Um, especially understanding, them understanding, like, you know, there are these biological components, of course, they can't help. So what are they doing with their community and understanding um, their community in terms of access to education and access to getting food? Right. Do you, you want to read the answer, or no? You can go ahead and I'll um, take your time. Yeah. So I, I think, and I think that's a really, um, I think that's a really good point, uh, uh, Phyllis. And um, oh, thank you. Yeah, I think those are really good points, Phyllis, um, ab about the larger community and how that how that connects with it. Um, and some of that also goes to the community partners when they s when they've seen what the kids are researching. They've expressed having value and um, seeing the students' pers the youth perspective on it. They've actually invited students to come and sit on um, uh, substance abuse committees in the community or, or form a youth committee that they're trying to form. They've, they invited students to come. So I think part of the working on the social determinants of health, a lot of that will come afterwards and how we can extend these experiences for the students, at least to bring some awareness to, to them and to, to the people who see the, who view the health summits. I think it's a really good question. We, I, we've had social determinants of health, what's happening in you know, the economic and political and social situation. We have that in our mind as we've designed it, but I don't think it's structured. It could be structured in, and we could measure it a lot better. We can see some of that in our qualitative results, but I think we could see more and be more structured about looking for them. Um, social determinants of health. I, I don't think. So. I think we that no. I don't think. I don't. I think we've it, we considered it, but we haven't structured it as a framework yet. Okay. Yeah, it's good. It's a good point. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm, I feel the opposite. That's why we're taping this. No, yeah. Actually, it's just, it's, we can talk about this more later. That'd yeah. be wonderful. And then yeah. if you have any ideas, we'll be. Yeah, it's right. still. I mean. Yeah, I'd like Hopefully to Hopefully we get I'd the next grant and then we can. Yeah. We, we Actually, can that it. really does feed into our next grant even better. Oh, really? So, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. the, oh. if, which we're hoping we get. That's great. Yeah. So that would be. So we I'm just wanted to make the curriculum first. So <laughs> 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 now let's start thinking about some right. larger issues. I, I really appreciate that. I think that's maybe one of those. Yeah. So I will try to, let's just try it again. It's now okay. on my desktop. Now we're going to try Okay, it again. so try it again. Okay. So again, try to. See if it works. Try to think what are students gained from this project. So what I do with their I just cover them? Okay. Well, cover them. Okay. No, it's the video, it's not. It's the HD, it's the thing. Mm -hmm. 
it's the internet's problem. It's not. Because it was with the cord, and we don't do something wrong with the cord. You know what? I will just do it this way. Because we're not many. How do I disconnect myself for a second from the HDMI? How do I disconnect? Not the HDMI. How do I disconnect from this thing? Huh? Off? OK, let's just do it this way. Just for one second, and then I hope you can hear it from my computer. of the curriculum developer and I really want to hear what about your project. So what's your project about? Our project is how does social media affect our mental health? Okay. That's a question that, that we were researching on. Why did you choose this question? Uh, well, I think all, all of us realize that we've been on social media way too much. Or everybody had different opinions on it, but as a whole, we realized we were on it too much. And so we wanted to find out what effects it has on our bodies and our mental health. And then He's saying we all realized that we're on social media too much, and then we wanted to figure out what is he saying? Um, what are the effects on our mental health and, and so on? I'll just I'll just say it, okay, and once he says it. What did you find out then? Somebody else. What did you guys find out? So he's actually reading. What happens now? He's actually reading it out from the poster. And he think we found out that people think, because they did surveys, people think that kids are addicted to social media. Okay. What does it mean to become addicted? What does it mean to, to become addicted? What is it? What's it? Okay, I, mean, I use social media too. Like, how am I addicted, or how do I know if I'm addicted? It means like uh, if you're staying on it too long, like if you're for a long period of time, if you're up all night looking up videos and stuff, that means you're kind of addicted. So he's explaining if you, you know, if you're on social media all the time and you listen to it all the time, and you wake up and you in the middle of the night, so that means you're addicted. Okay. Now my, I'm trying to understand, Mike, when I'm asking. Does he connect what we've learned? Is he able to articulate what he's learned in the science about the reward pathway? That's, that's what I'm trying. And then just try to listen if there's somebody telling him something from the side. You just, yeah, you won't be able to. How long, do, how long a day are, did you look for how long a day are kids on social media? Yes. Well, I, after, after we started, I kind of got like interested in it. And I set up on my phone, like, there's a thing where you can check how, how much time you're spending on it. So he's saying, after we started about it, um, I got interested in it. And then I set up on my phone this app, app that can, I said my words, can monitor how long I am staying on the, um, on the social media. So that's out his his. And I spent like I, I get less and less every week because I want to get lower. But I think last week I spent like eight hours. Eight hours. Wow. That's, That's lower. A day. From the a day. moment you come home, like at three. Well, all day. Yeah. Yeah. What about you guys? I don't spend that much time on social media. I spend like three hours, which is I think the least I heard over today. I think I heard somebody four hours. So you're so. What do you do after school? Yeah, like what you do? And do you think that that has the same effect on our brain? Is it the same? So, so I said the brain, and then I went back. I said, wait, I don't want. I want to see if they get. So now try to listen what somebody is telling them from the side, and I don't know if you'll be able to hear it. Okay, I mean, you enjoy playing with your friends? Yes. Is it the same system involved? Kind of, kind of. What do you mean, kind of? It's like, if you so I'm asking, is it the same system, right? Because I know what they've studied, and then he says kind of. Like he wasn't, he, he didn't make this connection. So the other kid from the back to hell is saying, tell her about the dopamine. dopamine. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, like say if you're playing a video game and you get a win in the game or something, dopamine will. What's dopamine? I know, but. So he's saying it's like if you play a game and then dopamine, and they're like, what's dopamine? Okay, so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you remember? It's a neurotransmitter that gets released when you're happy okay. or excited because something just happened. And so when you get a win, like you were saying, you think that I can do this again because you're happy. So he said he gets a neurotransmitter and it gets re released. And like when you get a win, like he was saying, when you get a win, then it's, it washes your brain or something.
That's what happens. Is that what happens to me when I'm on social media as well? And you get likes and stuff. When you get likes and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I see my kid. He's like, oh, I've got 30 likes. Oh, I've got 45 likes. Oh, I've got 100 likes. And then, yeah, that's a you know, yeah. So what's? But so what's the problem? Like, what's the problem? Like, why isn't it just good? I mean, it's obviously I get like comments and stuff. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, why isn't it just good for us to have like something that's like that? Because it's not like it's not like you're trying to get like you're trying to get attention. Yeah, 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 you're trying to get So what's the problem? It can be a bad thing. Because at a point, it can kind of be like a drug because you're so addicted to it. That's what you'll rather be on rather than spend time with your family and your or, or play games or, 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 or sports, anything. Or, yeah, like he said, you could... Um, like he said. Like you could... So I think I'll stop it here. So, and there, um, so I'll stop it here. No, I won't say what I think. I'll stop it here. And, uh, <laughs> and I want you to turn to each other and then just think, what if I were to ask, if, I, if we were asking what are the learning outcomes, what do students gain? What are like main, I, main things that students gain out of this engagement in the curriculum? What, what are some of the things that y you picked up? And this is just one example, of course, I know, but. Um, yep. So we'll give like two, three two minutes. Two minutes. <laughs> two minutes. I know. Allison's got one. You should have her. She offered twice. Oh, what the? What? Oh, oh, the jeans were three of us. It, it, but now I'm thinking, see, it's because of, she was using probably the cord, and then we couldn't do it with the cord, so I'm using the internet, and then the yeah, internet, that uh, doesn't work. It's be cord. Yeah. So it's 109. Okay, so we'll give them. Oh, yeah, I, uh, oh, no, I have another video, so I will keep it off. I have another video, and it won't work. So I think we'll, good testing, good testing. Oh. <laughs> I think we'll, well, yeah, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. oh, cool. It's 110, um, I'll, I'll give him one more minute or so. Yeah, I kind of, when I'm reiterating, I'm actually saying something. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, I think. No, 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 go ahead. I think it's No, an hour and a half is long. You can say whatever you, that's what I, you say whatever. Okay, I think. Yeah, okay, so. So I think I'll get everybody back together. Yep, so we'll leave some, yeah, I'll show you some more stuff. Um, okay, so does anybody want to share? <laughs> Guys, if you, if you want, yeah, if you, yeah, I'm sorry, I, I'll, I'll give you more opportunities, I promise. Um, do you want, does anybody want to share like what something they picked up on the, um, it was hard. It was hard, I'm sorry, yeah, it just doesn't work. In future iterations, we will have um, subtitles. Subtitles. Great. Um, and so they can probably relate to that and think about, oh, there's actually something we can do in our family or in our friend's family to sort of change that. I think this project is a way to sort of encourage um, these students to go to their family and friends and talk about this. Definitely. Yep. Did I cover that okay? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Phyllis. <laughs> Uh, so that's one thing, right? Merging the science with the lived experiences. 
and then maybe empowering them to do something. I mean, I can do something about it, or well, not here. This one doesn't show it actually, but well, yeah, maybe. Oh, the kid says oh, he's a put. He actually does. Yeah, I actually mm -hmm. learned so many <laughs> apps that they are on social media to re to reduce the num the number of minutes you use social media. So, okay, anybody else wants to say something? Becky. Um, one of the things that I thought was interesting, I think it fits in this sort. You said like science bucket or community bucket in terms of what are they doing. Um, so I thought they were kind of recognizing both the positive and negative aspects of dop uh, of dopamine. Um, like, what is it? Like, it makes you feel happy, but then like but then it also, like this repeated um, sort of behavior can be detrimental to other parts of your life. And it's really interesting because um, one of the things that they cover is natural selection because looking for thrills is something that is crucial for our survival and then that's what they learn. But actually this video doesn't show it, but I was trying to understand if that comes out in the conversation. So I asked them things like, do we need this? So why do we have this? And actually that didn't go through um, as much, uh, you don't see it here, right? But y that, that like tying natural selection, and being able to talk to me about natural selection. I mean, I know if you give them a rabbit inside a field, it, they might be able to do this because that's the simulation they use or something. But tie, and they understood the collection, the relation in the class, but then it didn't come up naturally in their discussion. So that was something that we, um, we need to put more emphasis on how to tie it, like make those explicit connections between what you learn and then how does that play around in your, in your and I think natural selection is a complex thing, and then it was complex even more to tie it back to, because I asked the kid, um, so why do we have, na like, um, that's a, well, it was like cycling back. It wasn't like a really nice explanation of why. Um, so that, yep, that's fun. Thank you. Um, any others, something some, somebody noticed? Um, should I say Omar one more thing or just go to them? I just want to say one more thing. Most of the classes, and I don't know how, how much you saw this. Well, it did. they were collaborating really nicely and building upon one's explanation. And also they were um, just like experts, right? They're experts in the field. So we all come and we all have, so I'm from the curriculum development and this person is from public health and this one is from, uni the other, we, we, you know, we're all from different, and they are experts. They're in the, mi they're in the focus and they're explaining to us what happened and like what can you do about it so that was one thing and collaboration um, kids or at least the teachers we've talked to don't collaborate so much in their classes so um, so for them to be able to collaborate in a group and like build upon one each other's like like he was saying like he was saying so that was another thing that pointed out really nicely here um, I'll give you I'll show you some okay so this again will be kind of hard to hear this is a teacher I'll give you two min one minute from what a teacher is saying so we have different perspective. Oh, it's kind of hard. Okay. So a she's, ta she's talking, she's a sixth grade teacher and she did the diabetes unit. This is the second year she's done it. Oh, this is the, no, second. Oh, she's done it third year, but this interview is from, oh, from the second, yeah. right? Yes, yeah, Robin yeah. Central T. Okay. Um. Yes, so mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. what did he say about he, it? he was impressed with how they could talk to strangers mm -hmm. and defend their work. Mm -hmm. Argumentation. Argumentation. So we were asking her, she's saying somebody came from the school with the class and what did he notice? And now she's, this is what she's saying. So he was amazed by how they could stand up for what they've um, researched. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Other you know, and the argumentation. Right, and, and I, they really, like my, our turns are, my rough and tumble sports kid, okay? And to listen to him dialogue, I didn't think he would, I thought he would sit back and kind of let women take the lead with him. So there are two students, and one is a kind of a sports kid, and the other one is more into, so she was sure they would come, and he would let the other one talk. Best buds. And our Tara and Joe turned in and had, and he got the most excited every time he was handing an award. You see, we've got another one of these, look. we got another one of these, look. we got another one of these. Look, one of these. <laughs> you know, and so, in a sense, that's why I want our projects. We're going to hang kind of our data up here on this. I, I'm going to, don't worry, everything will come back up <laughs> to Christmas. I mean, you need, you need the day. Oh. Well, what we'll probably do, we'll take it, we should go take pictures that's on January 3rd. And then fourth we And then the fourth we over. start to yeah. bring, it, yeah. we'll bring them back. It's it not that It was one of those, I mean, they were so excited. And I've laminated all their awards so that we're going to hang so them up. So they're, oh, I want to say that. Uh, 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 you know, because everybody signed. We only have one that's not signed, but they all have their signature. Yeah, I, with the, the judges took it seriously. Yeah. The, and they really signed it. And right. they, it's written there who they are and from right. which organization they mm -hmm. are. Right, which I thought then gave more meaning to 
here's this person that you've talked to from this oh, organization. Oh, that's She's saying that gave more meaning. Here's the person that you've talked to from this and this organization. So, okay. So I'll give you like two minutes again, or one, two minutes. Yeah, two minutes if you've seen anything. One minute to talk to each other and see if you've seen anything else, or and and then we'll get together again. Yep. Oh, you want to say something? Yeah. No. I mean, thinking about the science and the community bucket, or just and how the teacher was talking about the student, if you could hear it anywhere. If there's anything, or you, you know, you know what we'll just say. If anything, is, do you have anything else to add to what we've already said um, about? Um, yeah. So, so related to what Mom Sue said, uh, Consuela said twice we're trying to reduce the achievement gap. And so the, the, the goal all around seems like you're going to come up and talk to us about mm -hmm. how you're re reducing the achievement gap. And we didn't get any of that, right? So you set us up. So I think this is what Mom Sue's getting yeah. to. You set us up oh. that you're reducing the achievement gap. You probably are, but you, you didn't present any. So I, well, for me too, I would be curious on. What evidence have you collected yeah, that show shows that you're doing that? Yeah. Or at least you be able to, you, you have this kind of plan to gather the evidence that someone asked blah, 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 let me hear it back. Right. So you didn't see yet. Oh, so this is long. So, so, yeah, so, okay. So, I, um, so for, this, for this specifically, we want to know just like with, we're going over the evidence now. Yeah, I've got some of them, but we're still in the process. So these are, will probably still change. But what we're doing at this uh, moment with this specific question is we just want to see what, what did the students gain from such uh, a, a, a structure that puts together the community, or the community inspired within project-based learning. And so with two, diff with two ways, one within the curriculum with a community action project, oh, um, Yes, Joe. Or no, and, and then the other is through the structure that they're involved throughout the process. And so what is, yeah, so that's the question. So we are going through all this data and we're trying to collect evidence based on, you know, from students' perspective, from teachers' perspective, from their outcomes, and analyze what are the themes or what are the main ideas, what are the main achieve, uh, achievements. And uh, not necessarily restricted to to, scien to scientific um, achievements on standard right. testing. That's what I wanted to say. So not, not, not restricted to that. Um, so, so, yeah, Joe, you wanted to say something. I, I would say, you know, that's a fine goal for a presentation, right? Yeah. I didn't feel like I was set up that way. Okay. okay. That's all, right? At least yeah. for me, I was set up to, to get to something else, right? And then, but the, but the final thing came along and said, we were going to do this. Yeah. I had no idea that's what you were going to do. Right. That's a good point. Right, so it's just you know, nothing, nothing negative about it. It was no. a very nice presentation. I was just trying to reinforce Nam Su that I, at least I wasn't prepared for that as the final option. So that was leading yeah. to another way, and then that would take another. Sorry, kind of, you don't need to say that, oh, the student can't concentrate on the thing, or grid learning is our learning outcome, you know, our project learning goal, or project goal. You say that, oh, this is relevant and motivation attitude that is we uh, pursue to from the, this project. Right. This. I don't think it's your goal. Your goal is the just the concentration understanding or the students understanding in the concept. More kind of uh, no, so 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 okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. So oh. it, it, it one of the aspects is, I think this one, and again, you see just the three, but there's currently six, but again, it's we, we're revising that. So currently we want to know what are the gains. So for example, I think the first one, you, you the Phil said that lived experience with the science and they're intertwined, and like how they talk about the science and that. So that's, f yeah. for example. And then the positive attitudes, like kids come to the interviews and say, science is fun. I'm like, yeah. science fun? How can science be fun? And I make this face, and then they have to explain how science, so that's t the motivation and the attitudes and all that. Um, and then you've seen them as collaborators. Well, again, this is just one thing, but so multiple um, and experts and the way that, so 
this is from that. Apart from that, one of the big things we've struggled with was especially with the, with the modeling and put it with the practice of modeling. So we have one of the things we've, um, what scaffolds do you need to put in place for the teachers, for the students to be able to carry out modeling? Because there's so many things, there's the content knowledge in there, there's the practice of the modeling, there's the cause and effect, and how do you put, and then there's Sage Model which puts in the technology. So we, we have evidence, we, we, we are looking at students' model over time and as we change and add scaffolds to the project. But that's like a different, that's a totally different yeah. aspect of that. That's not related yeah, to yeah, that. Your presentation, I so, think. yeah, so okay. for the presentation, it, it basically that. So it's more, more the attitude of motivation and the more relevancy. And relevancy to their students' life and, and so on, yeah. So you're going to look at the, the other learning aspects. Yes, we have. We have, uh, yeah, definitely, but not this, yeah. Thank you. Um, I just want to um, just reiterate that I really like this project, and I think um, just one way to change it up is to make sure that um, in the beginning of the presentation that you have these concrete research questions. Mm -hmm. So put and them up in the front. Would, yeah, that, that, is, that would cool. help a lot with how you're responding Right, okay. Um, at least, if not to reflect raw research questions, and that would, because I think we know implicitly, um, just put that in the beginning slides, and I think that would help address some of these issues. So, like the did. broad research question and the specific one for the presentation, that would help you focus yeah. where we're going. Our question is going to be saying that, no, 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 our question, our focus is here, so you have to see it that way, and then we don't want to. Got, uh, we have it on, <laughs> and we have it on tape, so. <laughs> Along those lines, right, because awesome. it seemed like the, the evidence that you were presenting right, spoke most cogently to the NIH's goal, which is changing the behaviors of people in the community in ways that are, that are health-centered, right? Right. You're, you seem to have, okay, and that was never earlier on, talked about the NGSS um, kind of kind of outcomes, right? And then present anything on NGSS kind of outcomes. The strongest evidence you had was for what I think are NIH's goals, which is, you know, how do you help the community to really build and change um, the way they view health choices, right, in light of, of these other things. That seemed your strongest body of evidence. Wait, again, Bob, how the community changed there, or? Because what they're really doing, right, those kids, in terms of the, of the video, right, right, were really talking about deep issues with addiction and were demonstrating repeatedly, hey, I'm trying to cut down on my amount of use and these sorts of things that, you know, to me, if I'm an NIH funder, I'm going, yes, <laughs> right, because this is changing behaviors, not within themselves, right, but also within their community in sort of mutually reinforcing ways. And that struck me as being the big story here, right? That, the, that these are the things that, that were really changing community choices based on their understanding of the science, right, in ways that are meaningful and substantive. Right, yeah, I agree. Right? Um, and it's not, you really weren't <coughs> focused on NGSS outcomes in this talk, you were focused on that, and that's the big story, right? And for this, that. for this talk, yeah. Right. I'm going to push back a little bit on a different <laughs> one, though, and that's with the science is fun thing, right? Because I think there's a danger there, right? And it becomes a little bit the pedagogy of poverty, right? That we're willing to accept in urban schools an outcome of, yes, science is fun, right? Without kind of pushing harder to, yeah, science is deeply engaging and interesting, and we've got this set of skills that we've developed during the class. And you can show the learning outcomes. And, right. Right. and so you can show learning outcomes is okay, but without showing learning outcomes. Right. It's, it's a, and I agree. I want to say that our first decision was we're not lowering the bar. So when they say st science is fun, it's actually, I think, right, they wouldn't say engaging. They say fun, then you ask them, like, you have been working so hard, and the teachers have been working so hard. It's not that you come and you dance, whatever, you know, you just do something, and you you really learn science, and they, they, they struggled with lots of things on the way. So maybe the way this, 
the, the, for us, I agree with the way for us to communicate that. Well, the kid said it's fun, but we know when he says fun, it, it's not, we didn't lower the bar. They are learning just like NGSS would right. So I think I would try right, to communicate that. Parallel in the way that Joe describes, right? Because that, that helps obviate that criticism, right? That you. That it's not just fun. Yeah. Right, that you're just doing point. engagement, yeah. right? Because yeah. we've all seen this. Right, you know, it's oh, it's happy, it's exciting. We've got the demo going, and everybody goes ah, right. Um, but the actual learning isn't taking place. Right, right. And right. Yeah, and that's not true, definitely, because it's a really rigorous unit. Both of them are really rigorous units. It's with a lot of, um, you know, the the NGSS ideas and this idea of bringing, um, you know, the three dimensions together. And so, yeah, we definitely do not want to give off the idea that they're doing these really fun yeah. things. They really are you know, engaged in, deeply in the science. I think the question comes then, and what Edith said is, how do we then get them to talk more about that as they're talking about all of the great things that they're um, seeing, that they, how they could improve their health or their community. So I think we need to work more on how we get them to talk more deeply about the science in, um, in conjunction with or as they're explaining their social action research. I, I mean, I, I think that's one way to get away from, it's just really fun. Well, it, it fun, engaging, but we want them to be able to talk about all the stuff that they have learned. Because no, through their I, model. But I wasn't really talking about the oh. students here so much as your presentation. As the way we say oh, yeah, it, okay. right. like communicated, right, right, right. not as, okay. right, right, yeah, right. Yeah. So, the, so I would try to combine those things so that you're telling that, that piece of the story. Yeah, that's a really good point. And if you can oppose this as more of Right. I don't know. Look, it is a great project. I mean, all that stuff, yeah, right? right. No, 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 it's great. We're all here as friends. Yeah, it yeah, is yeah. a wonderful project. Yeah. And anybody that was at the open halls or the, the summit, final to the summit. saw all the yeah. excitement, uh, the wonderfulness. And none of this was said in, uh, this, is it, you know, scholars can't, uh, academics can't avoid <laughs> Yeah, they can't praise, they have to criticize. Right. No, 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 but, no, we're, but, we, no but, it's, but it's really helpful because we want yeah. to be able to present it to our fellow researchers in a way that you're seeing all of the really cool things that we're doing and the student excitement and their learning. So it's really helpful. And not lowering the bar, which right. I think is really important because that was the first. We could keep going with yeah. all of these, well, but it, it is after 1.30. We're sorry. More, we're I know we have Thank, you. Thank you so much for coming. Allow people to leave if they need to. <laughs> and we'd like to talk more to anybody who can stay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all our oh. presenters. You get the, crea the official create <laughs> gift. No. Excellent. Our next one is, Ooh. our next seminar is. Wow. Next week. It's next week, on uh, Wednesday. Um, and wow. And, and this, this is a cool one. And, um, what is it? A, a USB yeah. external drive. Yeah. External drive. Yeah. Holy cow. This that is so cool. Could you measure the student modeling? We, we are. Over time. Over time. Because we have the stage model over time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we, what we are this, doing. So anybody's got a blue <laughs> shirt? Jacket on? Are the researchers? Are the curriculum researchers? I'm the project manager. Oh, she has a Oh my God! Please. No, 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 no. She wants the rubric. I just wanted her to. I have to do kind of. 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 I have to do kind of.